We have seen that the more threads MTT S80 and S70 aren't the best for gaming. They have good specs on paper, but when it comes into action, the performance is similar to that of an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. But what if we were to use lossless scaling's frame generation alongside an AMD GPU? Could the MTT S80 be a good card for generating frames? Or could we even generate enough frames to make the MTT S80 playable in 4K? So here we have a More Threads MTT S80. This is one of the best GPUs More Threads has to offer, and is mostly a work in progress still. When I plugged it in and installed the drivers, we got nothing. Just a blank screen. Obviously, it wouldn't be a GPU specs video if everything just worked the first time. So after a phone call to More Threads, apparently you can't use Windows 24H2 and have to use 23H2. But it's not like you can just downgrade without deleting everything. So I had to get a new SSD and reinstall everything. But now at least the driver works. But wait. We need to get a new copy of Windows to get rid of this watermark now. But there's no way I'm paying $200 for a copy of Windows. Let me check how much I have. How about just $23 instead? Head on over to VIPSCDKey.com to view many Windows 11 CD keys and use the exclusive 25% discount code GPU to get Windows 11 CD keys for just $23 each. That's $177 less than the retail price. Once you've paid, you have your Windows key ready in your purchased orders. Click View Keys, copy your Windows 11 CD key and go to Activation Settings. Click Change and add your product key in and now Windows is activated. If you're looking for a different version like Windows 10, you can use the same code GPU to get it for just $11. VIP SED key not only has software keys, but they also have many popular games which you can get a discount on by using code GPU25, making Hamwatch 2 just $6. VIP SED key has all software on sale, so make sure you check out the links in the description. So as you can see, we have the More Threads MTT S80 showing up in GPU Z, and it's running at PCIe 4.0 x16. But in order to get the most performance out of this card, we need to use PCIe 5.0. Yes, the More Threads MTT S80 does actually have PCIe 5.0. In fact, it was the first graphics card with PCIe 5.0. For the other specs of this card, we have 4096 Musa cores, which is kind of like more threads version of CUDA cores, a GPU clock of 1.8 GHz, 16 GB of GDDR6 memory, and 14.4 teraflops of FP32 performance. We also have three DisplayPort 1.4As and HDMI 2.1. So looking at these specs, you might think that this is a pretty decent card, but knowing more threads, drivers, and optimizations, I'm not so sure. We need to change the motherboards that we're currently using as it only supports PCIe 4.0. And even worse, it only has an X4 slot at the bottom. So this could be quite a big bottleneck for two of our PCIe 5.0 X16 cards. Let's use a different motherboard. This is the MSI MAG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi and it supports up to two PCIe 5.0 X8 slots on the first and second slots. This means that we should have no bottlenecks when testing out dual PCIe 5.0 GPUs. Even though it's only X8, it should have more than enough bandwidth without spending like two grand on a Threadripper CPU because we're using a Ryzen 9 9900X which has 24 usable PCIe lanes and that would obviously not be enough for two full X16 slots. So we're going to connect our CPU, RAM, which is this 32GB kit from Corsair, a CPU cooler, and the More Threads MTT S80 graphics card, which for some reason has a CPU 8-pin power connector. So they include this adapter which lets us plug in two 8-pin PCIe power connectors instead. At this point, I might as well be making a new PC with the SSD and all that. Now, there is a chance that this whole setup might not even work, because the MTT S80 doesn't work on every motherboard, and this motherboard is not listed in the recommended boards. I'm hoping because it's an MSI X670 board that it should work, but let's find out. Okay, thank god it actually works. I'm going to make sure that the RAM is set to the right speed and that resize bar is enabled. Yes, you actually need resize bar for the MTT S80 to actually work. Now our GPU is successfully running at PCIe 5.0 and we can test some games to see how well the More Threads MTT S80 performs. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at ultra texture settings and low slash medium everything else, at 1080p, we get 34.7 FPS on average which is pretty bad considering this is at 1080p and the settings aren't even that high. Worse yet, the 1% and 0.1% lows are at 16.2 and 13.4 FPS respectively, which shows some major stuttering going on. But at least you can actually play the game. More Threads didn't even support DirectX 12 games until recently, so Red Dead Redemption 2 wouldn't even start before. Forza Horizon 5 is another DirectX 12 game, but unlike Red Dead Redemption 2, this has many graphical issues. At the medium preset 1080p, we got 17.8 FPS on average, which is not playable, and not to mention that the game looks awful. If you're wondering about the GPU usage, just ignore the GPU usage on MSI Afterburner because it doesn't work. It always says 0 or 1% usage. 
The real usage is shown here on the Mothred's Pez Utility Overlay. The only game that really played well was GTA 5 at the max settings 1080p. Here we get 59.6 FPS on average, which was great. The only problem is that the lows were at 11.3 and 6.3 FPS, showing some real big stuttering going on. So the MTT S80 sucks at gaming, but is it good at frame generation? In order to find this out, we're going to use the AMD RX 9070 XT to play some games, and then we're going to use the More Threads MTT S80 with Loss of Scaling's dual GPU mode, and hopefully we can get loads of frames. Basically, we will set our games to play on the 9070 XT, and then have Loss of Scaling running on our MTT S80. We will first get our 9070 XT and plug that into our first slot, and then we'll get the MTT S80 and plug that into our second slot. Now we need five, Yes, five 8-pin PCIe power connectors. There aren't even enough separate cables on my PSU for that, so I'm going to have to use two connectors from one cable, but I think it should be fine with my 1000 watt PSU. I don't know exactly how much power this PC is drawing, but I can tell you it's probably a lot. Our video cable goes into the card running loss to scaling, which is our MTT S80. And once we have our AMD drivers in stores, we can launch Red Dead Redemption 2 at maximum settings 4K. We also have MSAA x4 which would definitely decrease our FPS by quite a bit. Here we got 44.6 FPS on average on the 9070 XT. Without MSAA x4 we were getting over 100 FPS. But since we can generate some extra frames, we might as well leave MSAA on. Turning on loss to scaling LSFG 3.0 at the 3 times multiplier, with the GPU set to the MTT S80 and flow scale at 100, we got a confused result to say the least. At first it looked okay, but the base FPS was drifting from the actual FPS shown by MSI Afterburner, and it was most definitely not 3xing our FPS. We had about 72 FPS in total, so I thought maybe the MTT S80 can't handle the 4K inputs very well, so I turned down the flow scale to 50 and put the multiplier to 2x. Now it made even less sense because it said our base FPS was 60 when we only had 44. The more threads GPU was definitely under load as shown by the utility and I could hear it running. I have no idea what frames it was actually generating. Like it was almost doubling the FPS, but I have no idea where this 60 FPS came from. Trying the game at 1080p didn't seem to have much of an effect either, but it was a little better. Well, in terms of the base FPS anyway, we had 116 FPS at the max settings with MSAA x4. But with lots of scaling on, it was stuck at 60 FPS for the base, even though we had a 120Hz monitor. The same things happened in other games like Cyberpunk. Here, the FPS numbers weren't matching and changing the flow scale, capture methods and frame generation version didn't seem to make a difference at all. In Forza Horizon 5, with the FPS capped at 30, it was still showing 60 FPS as the base, which didn't make any sense. I guess that more threats can't do frame generation. I don't really know what the problem is, but it doesn't appear to be compatible. That means we're going to have to do what I really didn't want to do and that is play games on the MTT S80 and use our 9070 XT for frame generation. Luckily, we don't need to swap our GPUs around for this as they're both in PCIe 5.0 X8 slots, but we should probably unplug the video cable from the MTT S80 and plug that into the 9070 XT. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p with texture quality at ultra and everything else at low slash medium, we got 34.5 FPS running the game on the MTT S80. This should be enough to run frame generation effectively, so turning on LSFG 3.0 with a 3 times multiplier and flow scale at 100, we can quite easily triple our FPS to over 90. The game feels pretty smooth and there aren't really any glitches. By doing this, we are only using about 17% of our 9070 XT, so let's turn it up a bit to the 20 times multiplier. Now we're getting 600 to 700 FPS while using approximately 70% of our 9070 XT. So that's pretty good because now our More Threads MTT S80 is actually quite playable. Although I would definitely say that I can't tell the difference between playing it like 120 FPS compared to 700. I suppose if I had a monitor with a really high refresh rate, then this could come in handy. But I'm not sure I'd use the MTT S80 though. At 4K, our base drops to 22 FPS, and we can just about run loss of scaling with the 20 times multiplier at 100 flow scale because our base FPS is pretty low. We're using around 85% of our GPU, so we can generate 500 FPS if we wanted to, but realistically, the base FPS is a bit too low here to get a good gaming experience. Cyberpunk at low settings 4K achieved 8.7 FPS on average. Yes, you heard right, 8.7. There was really no point turning on frame generation here, as the FPS is way too low, but I did it anyway, and we could get like 100 to 200 FPS at the 20 times multiplier. But the game was unplayable anyway due to the low base FPS. 
Even when we turned the game down to 1080p, we only got 18.5 FPS on average, which is not great. And turning on frame generation, we could easily 20x our frames. Although this is better, I would still say it's pretty much unplayable with the low FPS and stuttering. So Cyberpunk on the MTT SAD remains unplayable even with frame generation. GTA 5 at very high texture quality and normal high everything else gave us 117.2 FPS on average, which is really decent, as long as we ignore the stuttering. The 1% and 0.1% lows were at 10.9 and 8.4 FPS respectively. We could easily turn on frame gen using the 3 times multiplier to get over 300 FPS, and we could even turn it up to 10 times to get over 1000 FPS and a 9070 XT would be able to handle it. Over 10x, the 9070 XT struggled quite a bit as the base FPS was very high. We were using about 85% of the MD card at just 10 times frame generation. At 4K, we were still getting 75.7 FPS on average, and we could scale at 3 times or up to 7 times at 100 flow scale. Any higher multiplier than this and we'd have to turn down the flow scale, but if we did turn it down to 50, we could get over 1000 FPS in 4K. At 4K, we can only scale up from 60 FPS due to limitations of my monitor. Forza Horizon 5 at the very low preset 1080p gave us 26.6 FPS on average. This is an awful result considering that this is at very low settings and the game looks extremely bad with the graphical glitches. But at least we should be able to generate some frames, as the FPS is not too low. So we can 10x or 20x our frames with the flow scale set at 100, because it's running at 1080p and our base FPS is pretty low. We're only using about 60% of our RX 9070 XT, so we still have more room for frame generation, possibly at 4K. However, I don't think there's any point trying 4K, because it's not going to be playable at all with the base FPS and graphical glitches in this game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider doesn't work with DirectX 12 on the MTT S80 for some reason reason, but it does work with DirectX 11. At 1080p, medium preset, we got 39.9 FPS on average with a fair amount of stuttering. We could turn on frame generation at 3 times or up to 20 times, and even then our 9070 XT was only at about 70% load. At 4K, we had to turn down the settings to the lowest preset and our base FPS drops to 27.5 FPS. If we had the settings any higher, we wouldn't have enough base FPS for frame generation. We can turn the multiplier up to 20 times and the 9070 XT would only be at about 85% load at 100 flow scale. Sometimes the base FPS does creep upwards to 60, mainly when you're looking up at the sky and stuff. And this causes stuttering and input delay because our 9070 XT can't handle 20 times frame generation at that base FPS. So it might be better to cap the FPS at 30 here, because that is the normal FPS at most times. Star Wars Jedi Survivor was unplayable. I wish there was more to say about it. Actually, no, I don't. Basically, at low settings 1080p, we got 10.5 FPS on average, which is nowhere near enough to run frame gen. I even tried to upscale from 720p to 1080p using loss of scaling, and we only got about 12 FPS here. So this is another game which the MTT S80 can't run even with frame generation. Resident Evil 3 at high settings 1080p gave us 35.5 FPS on average. The 3 times multiplier gave us almost 100 FPS, but we were only using roughly 13% of the 9070 XT. So we could turn the multiplier up to 20x, getting about 600 generated frames. At 4K, I had to change the settings down to medium to get a semi-decent FPS of 24.9. And we could then generate up to 20 times our base FPS with the flow scale at 100, because our base FPS is not that high. It's probably not very useful having 600 FPS if you don't have a high refresh rate display. So I suppose the 9070 XT might be a bit overkill as a dedicated frame generation card. So is more threads now good? No the end. But honestly, the more threads MTT S80 can't seem to run frame generation, and it can't play games particularly well either. It has stuttering issues and graphical settings need to be lowered. There's no way if you had two GPUs, you would choose to play on the MTT S80, you would choose to play on your AMD or Nvidia card, and then throw the MTT S80 into the bin. In games like Forza, we could play on just the 9070 XT at extreme settings 4K, and then we could cap the FPS to 60, and then turn on frame generation to like 5 times, all on the same GPU. This is already way better than playing on the MTT S80 at low settings, and we're only using about 85% of the GPU. By capping the FPS, we're leaving some room for loss of scaling's frame generation, which works better when the GPU is not at 100% load. Or better yet, we could just use another card similar to the cost of the MTT S80, like the RTX 4060, which only costs slightly more. That card gives us the ability to turn on MSAA x8 on the 9070 XT at extreme settings 4K. Then we can turn on frame generation at 3 times or even higher as long as we tune that flow scale down a bit. Even with frame generation, the MTT S80 is not good, but the card is always getting driver updates, which improves the performance in games. So perhaps in the future, it may be a viable option. Thanks for watching.